Hi everyone and welcome back to my lecture series on nonlinear dynamics or dynamical systems. It's been over a year since I made a video on nonlinear dynamics and a lot has changed about my channel in that year, so I thought why not go back to my roots and continue what I started. This video is going to be a continuation of the previous video on dynamical systems. I've put a link to that video in the description. Recall that in the previous video, we took a differential equation given by dx dt equals cosine x and showed what would happen to x if you started at any initial value x0. How we did that was make a plot of dx dt versus x. Then we graphed cosine x and said that wherever this graph was above the x-axis, the derivative was positive and x was increasing. Wherever the graph was below the x-axis, the derivative was negative and x was decreasing. I could then mark the point on the x-axis that represented my x0 and use these arrows to deduce where the system would end up as we moved forward in time. So for example, if I started my x0 here between 3 pi by 2 and 5 pi by 2, then eventually x of t would approach 5 pi by 2 since dx dt is positive in this region. Or since x wants to increase until it gets to a stationary point where the derivative is 0 and x no longer wants to go up. Okay, so now that we've briefly reviewed the previous lecture, I want to start this lecture by going over some definitions. First off, the x-axis in this graph here contains all the possible solutions that this differential equation could have, all the possible points that solutions of this differential equation could pass through. In other words, the x-axis contains all the possible states of the dynamical system. This is what we call a phase space. A phase space is the set of points which contains all the possible states of the dynamical system. For this particular example, the phase space is given by the x-axis, and in general for a one-dimensional dynamical system given by dx dt equals f of x, the phase space is the x-axis. The x-axis here contains all the solutions mainly because it's impossible for a one-dimensional system like this to move outside the x-axis. Secondly, this path that the point x0 followed towards the stationary point at 5 pi by 2, this path is called a trajectory. A trajectory is basically a line or a curve which represents the path a dynamical system, given by a differential equation like the one up here. It represents the path the dynamical system follows starting from some initial condition x0. This path, this trajectory, is contained in the phase space. Thirdly, this plot that I made of dx dt versus x, this plot is called the phase portrait. The phase portrait is a graph which shows the trajectories that a dynamical system or differential equation tends to follow. Just to reiterate, a phase space is a set of points which contains the states and solutions to the dynamical system, while a phase portrait is a graph that shows the behavior of trajectories in phase space. Hopefully that should be clear enough. There's a few more definitions I'd like to cover before I outline a general procedure on analyzing one-dimensional dynamical systems. These definitions involve the fixed points and their stability. A fixed point of a dynamical system given by dx by dt equals f of x is a point x sub f where dx by dt is zero. Other names for the fixed point include stationary point, steady state or equilibrium point, and I'm going to be using these names interchangeably so I'd recommend getting used to them. As an example of fixed points, these points in the dynamical system up here are fixed points. Now there's two main types of fixed points. Stable fixed points, which are fixed points where nearby trajectories or nearby states tend to converge to, and unstable fixed points from which nearby trajectories diverge. For the cosine x dynamical system, 3 pi by 2 would be an unstable fixed point, whereas 5 pi by 2 would be a stable fixed point. Just as a side note, you could use more rigorous definitions of stability, like Lyapunov stability or asymptotic stability, but I'll skip the rigor for now, because this series is meant to be more of an applied perspective on dynamical systems. Anyway, this whole procedure that I used to generate the phase portrait of dx by dt equals cosine x and analyze the behavior of this dynamical system, this whole procedure can be applied to any one-dimensional dynamical system dx by dt equals f of x, so long as f of x is nicely behaved and continuous and differentiable, etc., etc. 
So let's describe the steps necessary to analyze a general one-dimensional dynamical system given by dx by dt equals f of x. The first step is to draw the graph of f of x, or in other words, the beginning of the phase portrait. The second step is to determine the fixed points. You can do that graphically by finding the points where the graph of f of x crosses the x-axis, or you could just simply solve f of x equals zero and determine the fixed points that way. What we'll typically do here is solve f of x equals zero if the function is simple enough, and use the graphical method if the function is more complicated. Though you could solve f of x equals zero numerically, but we're gonna only look at the analytical bit. Once you've found the fixed points, what you can do is draw the flows. Basically what that means is that the region on the graph where f of x is positive, you draw arrows going to the right. Because when f of x is positive, dx by dt is greater than zero and x tends to increase. The opposite applies to regions on the graph where f of x is negative, so there you would draw left arrows. The next step is to determine the stability of the fixed points. As discussed earlier in the video, fixed points where the flow tends to converge are stable fixed points. Fixed points where the flows tend to diverge are unstable. And here's something I haven't mentioned before. Fixed points where the flow converges on one side but diverges on the other side are half stable. You could also call these half unstable points, but I'm more of a glass half full person, so I'll call them half stable. Get it? Half stable, half full, they both start with half. <laughs> Anyway, you might have noticed a bit of a geometric pattern already with the fixed points and their stability. Fixed points that occur when the f of x graph is sloping downwards tend to be stable, whereas fixed points that occur when the graph of f of x is sloping upwards are unstable. We're actually going to discuss this in more detail in the next video when I discuss linear stability analysis. Now with these four steps done, you could just determine the trajectory of x starting at any initial point x0 just by using the phase portrait. If my x0 started here, for example, then I could just find the trajectory by following the flows, or these arrows that I've drawn, and eventually I would converge to the nearby stable point in this case. So let's apply these five steps to an example. In this example, we want to draw the phase portrait of dx dt equals x cubed minus sine x, and find the trajectory of x when x0 equals pi by 2. Now it's going to be a little complicated to graph this function directly, so we're not going to draw x cubed minus sine x from the outset, though you could if you really wanted to. We're going to do something different, a bit of a roundabout way to plot this function x cubed minus sine x. So let's start with the first step of the analysis in the series of steps we spoke about just now. Let's draw x cubed and sine x separately because drawing them separately is easier than drawing them together. Now for the second step, which is finding the fixed points, we'll look at the points of intersection of x cubed and sine x. In other words, the values of x where the functions equal each other. Those values of x are the fixed points since here x cubed minus sine x is zero. There are, in fact, three such fixed points for this particular differential equation. Now the third step is to draw the flows, and since the differential equation is x cubed minus sine x, the regions on the phase space, which in this case is the x-axis, the regions on the phase space where x cubed is greater than sine x, that region is where dx by dt is positive, where x tends to increase. In contrast, the region where x cubed is less than sine x is where dx dt is negative and x tends to decrease. Now step four is where we determine the stability of the fixed points and that's pretty simple. These two points are where the flows tend to diverge, which means that they're unstable. The point at x equals zero in contrast is where the flows tend to converge, so it's stable. And we're almost done. We still have step 5 left, in which we find the trajectory of x of t starting from an initial point x0 equals pi by 2. That's fairly simple. You can start at pi by 2 and notice that the flows move to the right. So the trajectory is just going to follow the flow. And the trajectory here is going to keep going all the way to infinity because there isn't a nearby stable fixed point. So it certainly isn't going to follow a stable path. And that should do it. We've defined a few terms related to dynamical systems and phase portraits. 
We've presented a step-by-step -step procedure that should help you analyze a one-dimensional differential equation and find the trajectories of that dynamical system, and we've applied that procedure to an example. If you enjoyed the video and want more, feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and this is the faculty of Khan signing out.